tonight. Cruising's on Farmington Road, Peoria, Illinois. All five live. Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois. Yep. Cruising's on Farmington Road. Cruises. All five. The uh, doors open at seven. Show starts at eight. It's yes, indeed. Y'all, y'all hear it. Cruises. Pure Illinois, Bone Thugs and Harmony, all five live. Y'all get your asses on out here. I mean, it's crazy because yeah. it was like we was running so fast that they would actually take the music that we like already had mm-hmm. and they would say, hey, don't put this on the record. This right here we're going to use for a soundtrack, the Batman soundtrack, mm-hmm. all of the things, Chip Panther, everything yeah. that we've done. You know what I mean? Panther was about the only one that we actually sat down and wrote it for the movie. Yeah. Everything else was just like... You know what I mean? It was just because we was in that process. You know, when you're in that creative process, it's on and cracking. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just, mm-hmm. you're getting music done, getting music done. You can't put nothing out because the record's already out, still doing what it's doing. You don't want to cover it up and cross, cross promote to, to, you know, you know what I mean? Clutter the market, I think, is, mm-hmm. is what they call it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of like how it happened for us, you know, back then, you know. Mm-hmm. So what about looking to my eyes? Like, what was that about? Same, same dilly, yo. Yeah, certainly. Same mm-hmm. dilly. You know what I mean? Same dilly. Like, when you got a record out, mm-hmm. and then you can't put nothing else out, soundtracks start appearing, and it gives you a oh, chance yeah. to put out new music. You know what I mean? Back in the days, it, it wasn't, you know, remember back in the days, it was like you put a record mm-hmm. out, you couldn't put another one out for an entire year. Mm-hmm. And that's just how the company was, because they needed three quarters to market it. You put one out in September. At least. Yeah, at least. Three quarters. Six, at least like, six months. Like right. Yeah. What? Well, at minimum. Six months, yeah. I feel like I already know you guys because I watch so many Bone interviews. You know, and that's really enjoyable for me to watch. I mean, I've seen the documentary mm-hmm. probably a million times. You know, especially sure. within the past couple weeks since I knew you right. guys were awesome. coming. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I, like, I love watching those interviews. And I don't see anybody else doing as many interviews as you do. Yeah, we gotta run, I man. Mean, yeah. So do you ever get sick of the same questions over I and mean, over? Or do you? I mean, it's, 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 it's well, it, you can't get mad at being mm-hmm. routine. You know, whatever, sometimes it's routine and it, it's like. And we got to hit the radius. Certain, certain, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. some people, yeah. it's still, still. Some people still don't know. Like, right, because it's not serious that's radio. That's what I was thinking. I was like, man, I want to ask yeah. them these questions, mm-hmm. but it's like, man, I don't want to be that guy that just asks the same question over Different over. city, they got to know. You know, mm-hmm. serious radio covers everybody. We only cover here. And then, mm-hmm. and then yeah. here and here and here. You know how it go. And then yeah. you got to also understand that it's going to, the information is still going to touch ears that's going to be like spark the interest of people that may know very little about Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. Still. So. You, so, you, you live with it. You are, you guys, um, are you guys working on a new album? Well, we're pretty much working on a variety of pieces right now. We do have some ideas to be able to put together uh, a, a packaged album. And we've been working on a variety of singles lately. And keeping it creative and, uh, and productive as, as far as getting in the studio 2015. We did talk about some projects in 2014 and everything that may come into fruition and everything, but right now we're just going with the punches, going with the flow. We're going to work on a couple of singles, um, do a few collaborations, and take that to the road. Right now, Busy and I just uh, uh, um, uh, uh, just, just uh, got our uh, passports, mm-hmm. and so we uh, we uh, so you're gonna do an international tour. So we're gonna we're gonna it's it's a, right now for us it's about. We're gonna probably stab a couple of singles and a couple of uh, uh, features out right now. I don't want to spill the beans too soon. Oh, right, right. You see, you can spill the beans. That's it's the okay. thing. That's the thing. It's like I don't want to put it wanna... like this. Put it like this. Right now, you know, with what's going on in the industry, the the people that um, the new things that we have going on, they want to keep it on the hush hush because they want it to be very very surprising. But it's kind of like you know who they expect for us to to come out with. You know, it's not exactly Bone coming out with a song with Lady Gaga, but esque. You know, so we're dealing with that kind of uh, of talent, you know, with us at this point. You know, that's, that's great. Oh yeah, man, we're, yeah. we're we're doing new things, man. People are writing stuff for us and then using our voices as instruments. So mm-hmm. we're like we're expanding and, and and broadening our horizons, so people can understand that we're like a band and 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 not just a band. We're vocalists as well. We don't have to write everything mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. We can actually take what someone else writes mm-hmm. and then put our vibe to it, and then it's that original vibe. So it gives that authenticity yeah. than it just being a new rapper mm-hmm. rapping fast with mm-hmm. harmony. You you know, it's kind of like that. So those are the, some of the things that we've been, you know, working on together. And then, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. open to that because, you know, producer gets his thing, the writer gets his thing, mm-hmm. we're the vocalist, we get our thing. It's a organization type thing or a group kind of thing and everybody's hearts is into it. 
Most you know, so that's one of the things we're doing. You step into a Bone Thugs and Harmony session, no matter who we're in there with, you'll be amazed of the energy that floats and the ideas that bounce off each other. Everything, the creative process is just... I. That's because everybody's got so much love for you guys. I mean, they, yeah. from from the veterans to the yeah, new the guys, vets, you know what I mean? And then even from, like, Eugene right here, our, 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 our road manager slash, he wears so many hats, our, uh, our road manager, our sound guy, he takes care of everything top to bottom with respects of us being operating out on the road. Not just that. Um, creatively, when we go in the studio, it's like everybody understands that we're here to create something special. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and, and everybody's input is virtually priceless when it comes to that and you never know where a studio session with Bone Thugs might end up you know that's why we say yes there may be albums on the slate for, in the future but right now we're concentrating for us it's just one song at a time and that's what we're focusing on okay and, and the world that hey, is like this is getting ready to be my first time getting out the country and I don't know how long I've been stuck in America for. I, mean, <laughs> I love America. She's a, she's a beauty. I love her so much, but I gotta get a, I gotta get away. I gotta see what's going on in Europe, man. Yes, Australia, man. Japan, yes, yes. China, you yes. know. You know, maybe not China. But. So what what are you most excited about going to? Is that right now? Mexico. Yeah. Mexico. That's okay. up and coming and it, it's just like they say that the fan love that they have for us is like 10 times greater and crazier. This is what I hear. Like, you go to Mexico, it's like Busy Bone and Flesh and Bone go out there in Mexico. You know, we go through a walk through a mall in America. We try to walk through some strip mall in Mexico. They say it's just like, it's just like, it's the pan, it's like pandemonium. I, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's gonna be crazy. You know, I'm you know um, I'm I'm with Stack on that one. You know, I'm very excited about each city in particular. You know, we, you know, the the next one that's or, or each country that 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 we go to, every one that we go to is just like a brand new excitement because it's uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. It's like alien feet touching you know the ground for the first time. So it's like um, you know I'm excited as well, and you know the entire band is you know they're mm -hmm. they're excited about bringing us over there. You mm -hmm. know, and and um, you know, having, you know, it's kind of like big brothers bringing their brothers over to yeah, experience true. some stuff, you know, because yeah. um, I haven't been, you know, overseas at all. And Stack, it's been, I don't know, 10, oh, 15, years like probably. a long time since Stax was kind of like he ain't never went there either, so true. You know, I got my buddy with me. <laughs> I'm and my friend. This is what we do. The fans understand that. They know that the entire band, Bone Thugs and Harmony, has not been together um, on, on a world tour yeah. so this is history right here it is and the fans know that then yes and the reviews from the shows that we've been putting on as of late mm -hmm. is i don't know man God, better I and better and horn. better i can't yeah. i can't toot my own horn and nothing like that but I man did. come I on i got you man. stack let me just tell I you did. every <laughs> single show that we've been doing has been elevated and it's going up and up and up and up and up it you know because out. you know we're family mm -hmm. you know all of them sold out as eugene just told us i mean it's like and he keeps the numbers for us yeah you know um but, uh, yeah, this one's man. gonna sell out tonight. Oh, There's that's no doubt in my mind. I mean, it's gonna be crazy. It, this wasn't like I almost feel like you guys weren't supposed to be here. Like you're too big for this town of Peoria. You know what I mean? No, you. But it's gonna be like, and it's such. You know, it's not a huge venue. It's a smaller venue. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like you guys are performing in our living room. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're gonna be like right there. Like even right now, you guys are right mm -hmm. here. And like this is like such a historic moment. And even like you know? being in Peoria. How, how, am I saying that right? Peoria. 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 Yeah. Peoria. It's like being in Cleveland. It's like being in Los Angeles. It's like it's it. Uh, we fans state that type of stuff every night. I can't believe you guys have come here. Like as if like we gotta hit the market. When we hit the market, we're gonna hit the market. Mm -hmm. We're gonna hit the the uh, the places that people would not expect. Peoria. Oh, why wouldn't people expect us to come here? We're a touring group. We're a yeah. touring band. Mm -hmm. It's just like going to. Hungary or something like that or Cologne over there mm -hmm. in Europe or whatever like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the mm -hmm. same thing. We have fans that this we need to touch all here. over. This is a this is a big this doesn't happen every And I'm gonna tell you, you this know? is the home of the great Richard Pryor. Yes. yes. Oh so yes. it's like wow. we yeah. all grew up on him. Mm -hmm. You know, we all snuck to listen to his records and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so yeah, man, it, that's you know, when we rolled into the city 
that's the red carpet right there. You know, mm -hmm. the accolades and accolades mm -hmm. and, the, and the people that actually come from this part. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Peoria rocking too, <laughs> baby. Y'all rocking too. Busy Bone, you've been here two times. Yes, you've sir. You've been here uh, 10 years ago on the riverfront. They did a summer jam, you and Wish, him and Wishbone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, there was like 2,000 people there. It was incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, when I was in high school, uh, you came to a, a gym and you're, you're performing. And it was one of the best performances I've ever seen. But uh, I got to open for you, and I was cool. this long, and I got on tape. It was cool. do it, huh? I was little, and it was horrible. It was the worst rap you've ever heard in your life. Oh my <laughs> and uh, but yeah, it was a great. You know, it was just yeah, you awesome. gotta give me that tape over there, man. Put awesome. that up, post yeah. that up for. You know it. Yeah. I, it's on. It's, it's, you know it's on VHS. You like it. You know. Oh, it's on VHS. You need to flip it. Yeah, yeah I flip it. it. Yeah, it's it's a few bucks to flip it. Right. You know, they got the technology to take so, so, you guys started off as the Band Aid Boys. Right? Well, I mean, well, th this is kind of how it broke down. You know, Stack and, and, and Crazy, well, excuse me, Flesh and Bone, Crazy, mm -hmm. and Lazy Bone. Mm -hmm. They started off as the Band Aid Boys. Mm -hmm. And they kind of basically made this group, you know, from that scratch. These are the original ingredients. Mm -hmm. Wish and Busy, myself, we later, we were later on. But. The Band Aid Boys was like elementary school stack. Take yeah, elementary there. school. Man, we was like itty bitty dudes trying to. Rock. I can remember we were trying to. I, I was like nine or ten years old when I actually put a pen to a piece of paper, and literally tried to do something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Run DMC being the the great in my eyes yeah, at that are. time. And um, you know, you know, elementary turned in. You know, to uh, then the fat boys came along, and then this thing called the beatbox started getting big, and we started beatboxing and everything. You still so, beatbox? A little bit. Yeah. I'm a little bit rusty right now because what about of the you show busy? last night, but you know, but you beatbox? You know, we beatbox. Oh, uh, no, 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 I, I would do the singing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why they beatbox? I do the singing. I'm kind of good. I, I got a little something, something but I, nothing on um, Flesh and Lay. They were always. <laughs> so me and Lay was the beatbox dude. They used to call us the Twin Towers because we used to supply the beat and everything and let, you know, everybody kick it in and get the rap and battle rapping and everything. But, you know, we flexed the pen and the pad too. And, uh, and, uh, but yeah, junior high school, kicked it off junior high school, some youngsters, uh, Band-Aid boys, we was a little, you know, winning a little, you know, the contest and everything and stuff like that. We used, you know, and then the, the, uh, eventually the Band-Aid boys eventually turned into Bone Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Bone Enterprise, still local phenomenon. Were they were they so, picked up by then? No, yeah, you were Bone, but yes, busy, yes, busy, yes, yeah, yeah busy. Yeah, yeah well, well, busy busy the way it was, the way it was going was. was, <laughs> was well, <laughs> how old were you? Well, I was like, uh, like 13. 13. Yeah, I was 13 like when we all I met. Was like, I was like 16, 16 when I first met Busy. Yeah, because I'm only three years older than Busy. Yeah, you're like 16. Yeah, and, and I'm three years older than you, right? Yeah, you're like 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah. yeah. So you were 13. He was right. still tiny. Yeah, tiny, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. But he little was part of the crew. He came in, bone in a prize now, right? Yeah. So still kicking ass. The, the local phenomenon and everything. Kicking ass. Put out our there. first record, Faces yeah. of the Death. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was like, like he said, it was a local phenomenon. And we, you know, we wound up taking that record back in 90, what? Two or three? Mm -hmm. 91. Okay, so in '91 we took the um, we took mm -hmm. that record with us down to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and stayed out there for eight months. Mm -hmm. You know, went to different people's cribs and so on and so forth. And we finally got a call from the man himself. You know, yeah. may rest heavenly, um, Easy E. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been crazy ever since. It has mm -hmm. been crazy. Like, so then, seriously. so then uh, he came into the picture, and you guys put out a song, Thugs in Harmony. Mm -hmm. At the time you were Bone Enterprise, and that's how you got to the Bone Thugs. Well, see, the whole thing was Bone mm -hmm. Enterprise was a name that we couldn't use because we didn't know nothing about um, what do they call it? Patenting? What do they yeah, call it? Like yeah, we like, couldn't patent the name because somebody else sure, yeah. had that name. Uh -huh. an, an establishment in in Texas or something like that had that name, some huge building. So we were just Bone at yeah. that time, okay. and because that was all of our last names. And then you know it, he was asking, well, how do you guys explain your style? It's like we're thugs in harmony, because you know the the, the word gangster kind of mm -hmm. went out of style. Yeah. We're always street dudes, like we did it, you know, like we really, really did it. We were young, but we did it, like everything, stealing cars, guns, mm -hmm. drugs, everything. We did that, you know. Just so where did the word thug things, come you know? from? I mean, the two, hmm? the, where did the word thug come from? Did Tupac did he make that big, well, and then you I'm, guys were like, hey. It, like it had a lot to do with us looking at society. In Cleveland, mm -hmm. all you see is skull caps, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 thugs. Yeah. We definitely had like, to switch it up a little bit. We had to move away. Well, gangster, okay, gangster, thug, whatever. It's been you done. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you, it's like yeah. when you write when you write in yeah. a rap and you don't want to say gangster all the time. Yeah. Right. You throw a uh, thug in there. Yeah. It's just like saying a word, you know, a cuss word in the same rap or 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 N I double G. You know, you you want to switch it up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So in the course of switching it up, that flavor just. It, it brought itself to us, and Easy was like, you know what? That need to be your name. He was like, what? He's like, it needs to be Bone, Thugs, and Harmony. Yeah, he. We, we just thought it was a style. Mm -hmm. We're like, so how do you guys explain the way you guys rap? Because you got to remember, we were the first ones doing it. Mm -hmm. So we're coming out there, and they like, go ahead and rap, and we. They're like, what is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? We thugs in harmony, and that's how we used to explain it, because everybody was like, y'all rap in Chinese. You know what I mean? We got booed out of a lot of venues because of the way that we rapped. You know what I mean? Talent shows and different things of that nature. So that's how it came to be, man. Bless his heart, man. He was a genius. Still is. So I got a funny question for you. If you guys were the Ninja Turtles, oh, which member would be what turtle? A Raphael. I don't know, man. I've been in a discussion. No, no, no. Know. Easy E would be Master Splinter. Yeah, easy, oh, like a look. Master Splinter. Like yeah. a look. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think? What colors would you be? <laughs> Raphael purple, right? Uh, nope, that's, uh, yeah, Donatello. that's Donatello. That's Donatello. That's Donatello. Michelangelo. Like Michelangelo. No, Michelangelo. Sure. Michael something. Yeah. I already know I'm Raphael. That's all I know. Raphael, <laughs> <laughs> the one with the red. That's right, baby. That's right, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget. I, that was such a. Hey, change. man, and it's funny you just said that. Do you remember the car that got shot up, the Eagle? Yeah. That's yeah. what they used to call us on St. Yeah, Clair. Yeah, because we used to have this car that looked like a shell mm -hmm. and it had no floor. Mm -hmm. So we look like the Flintstones, <laughs> mm -hmm. but up to date. So they uh -huh. called us the Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Right. Yeah, man, that's crazy. You said it. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we took we took a couple uh, we took we, we took a poll on Facebook, okay. and I asked the question, who would win in an arm wrestling match between Busy Bone and Lazy Bone? Mm -hmm. Lazy Bone. You think so? The man has veins of steel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him, mm -hmm. but Lazy has veins. Steel. Mm -hmm. You hear me? All that wiring in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's steel, man. You got I, steel. I used to win bets. In, I used to win bets in, 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 in um in junior high school. In high school, little lady was so freaking tough. Mm -hmm. You know, cause he was. You know, <laughs> little, little, little dude. A little scrappy kind. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I used to pick bets against you know wrestling matches, mm -hmm. and I would bet big dudes mm -hmm. that my little brother I could slam them. I mean, literally pick them up and boom them and like <laughs> boom you on your head. Mm -hmm. I used to win bets like that. And like, every time, you no, know, you get you get these big dudes trying to grab little lady like they gonna just gonna dog him, think they gonna dog him. And what do you know? Look, the big dudes come up off their feet and this little tiny dude slamming people. The dude cold.